Hello and what's up guys? It has been a while since I uploaded videos about my homemade powder coating setup. And so today, I thought it would be nice to give you an update about my homemade equipment. As you may have known, this is the powder coating gun that I put together from recycled materials picked up from the trash. Some time ago, I was able to get my hands of this commercial high voltage cascade for powder coating. This particular cascade only have two wires. It does not have the third wire for the current sense as my existing homemade version. It only has the connection to the ground and the power output. I asked the seller and she said to just leave the third wire disconnected. Later, I will assemble another powder coating gun utilizing this commercial high voltage cascade. We already know that there is a resistor to the high voltage output of the cascade, but we have no idea what the resistance value is. And so now, we will finally be able to find out what is the resistance value. I drill through the clear epoxy so that I can poke the terminals with the test probe and measure the resistance. As you can see, I am getting about 142 mega ohms. My chip ohmmeter is not accurate for such resistance range, but I can conclude that the nominal value of the output resistor is about 150 mega ohms because the same store in China that I bought the cascade also sells the components to make the cascade and they do have 150 mega ohms resistors and you can see it here on another cascade models. I am having a lot of orange peel issues in the past and that may be caused by too much electrostatic charge. And so, I thought that adding the proper output resistor could be the solution. The largest value resistors I can buy at the moment is only 5 mega ohms each. Due to limited space, I'm only able to connect 5 resistors in series for a total resistance of about 25 mega ohms. I then cover them fully with the hot glue. This is the powder coating gun nozzle that I have shown you in previous videos. I'll take it apart so that you can see how it works. The stainless steel wire electrode extends to the back end as shown. To make the connection to the electrode, I have this solid copper wire with a spiral end. That is what I insert in the hole so it makes good electrical contact to the stainless steel electrode like so. I then simply solder the wire to the resistor that is connected to the output of the cascade. I later cover all the exposed conductor with hot glue. To test the presence of electrostatic charge, I simply point the gun to a hanging tissue paper and you can see that the paper is being pushed back by electrostatic wind. And so now we are ready to do some powder coating. This is my simple setup. I have an air compressor and the compressed air passed through this air filter dryer. In the past, I am having problems with powder clumping together due to moisture in the air. And so the filter dryer is really important. The compressed air then goes to my solenoid controlled air regulator manifold. 
The solenoid is controlled by the power supply box. I am not using the powder pump right now, so I only need one air regulator of the manifold. For initial testing, I just used flour instead of paint powder just to see the powder cloud and adjust the airflow as needed. I am ready to do powder coating so I put some paint powder into the hopper which is nothing more than a discarded sports drink plastic bottle. I am powder coating these sheet metal cases. At the moment, the case is on top of the steel table and those corners act as Faraday cages, making it hard for the powder to get through. Hanging the part is the ideal setup because we get better access to all sides. However, hanging the part is not always possible due to my small oven and so what I did is put the part on top of this metal oven grill. The metal grill connects to ground. And that is how I do all the remaining metal cases and it seems to work great. This is my countertop kitchen oven that I modified for powder coating. You can see more about this oven on my previous videos. You notice that I made several color changes. That is easily done since I can have several powder hoppers because they are just discarded plastic bottles. You can see that putting the part on top of the oven grill is really convenient. This is the metal case I powder coated white. Turns out really well and without the orange peel defect as with my previous powder coating. These are the parts I powder coated black. The surface is rough due to corrosion and so it also shows even after powder coating. Later I used matte black powder paint and it works really well to make the rough surface not very obvious. You can see that I was able to get full paint coverage even in the crevices that is prone to Faraday cage effect. This is the metal case that I powder coated red and it turns out really well just the same. This case is powder coated with candy blue powder paint. It have an interesting story so I will make a separate follow-up video about this item in particular. Thank you very much if you stay around until the end of this video. With all the rubbish videos that floods Facebook and YouTube, I am glad that I am still having viewership from a few people who are interested with original and informative content that I am making. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe in YouTube, follow me on Facebook, and leave a comment. Thank you very much and God bless you all.